Oh, yeah. <laughs> I have a hard time with this one. Yeah, you see this video here? This number 12. I actually uh, uploaded this one to YouTube. If anyone is following, they may have gotten a message regarding this one. Uh, 41 and a half minute long video. Turns out that, um, I hope it's on now, that I recorded this entire video not realizing that the microphone was uh, turned off. So it's uh, all blank, but I, I do, uh, I mean, the volume, there's no uh, sound. But I do want to keep it temporarily as a reference uh, as to what I was doing at the time. Which was uh, as it says bi-directional RPC. What I mean by that is, uh, you know, I how I, I had that client-server thing with the whole hello world, and was able to uh, send messages to the server that it. Yeah would invoke uh, a remote procedure to print out the message that I sent. Uh, now I've made another project that uh, does it uh, the other way around. Uh, I, I can now, or I send a message to the request, rather, to the server to run a procedure uh, which fills in a buffer of a size that I, that I specify uh, with some data. Okay, now I, uh, the way I ended up being able to do this, uh, in fact, uh, <laughs> relied uh, on um, mostly guesswork and one known project that works. Right? I guess that's all you need. Uh, let's see, now this has two subdirectories. Hello, which is the one that we were working on, and reply. This thing. I see, see, at some point this stopped working. And then as soon as it started working again, I zipped it up. And that would probably do the first one here. And two more zips following that. Uh, I guess because of some other changes. But I have a, something that works. And I followed, I should probably do it over again. Um, just to show you how, how how I did it, I, I couldn't remember exactly, you know, what the num I had numbered steps before. I couldn't remember the order, but uh, why don't I do that? Why don't I um, do it again? I wonder if I should use my my full screen command prompt. I don't. The problem is I don't get this blinking cursor. I could sort of get it. Let's see now. Do I have it? I'm going to build it. Or I have it in YouTube. Um, the call FSCB. Oh, yeah, it still works. But I would want um, a different size box. And this size box is much better for that. <clears throat> FSCMD. So, whoops, I went over to here and it had the hello stuff. So I made a new directory. Let's, 
Maybe I should move that and do it all over again. Oops. Um, rename. Um, did that work? Yeah. So this is now empty. Then uh, I copied the IDL file. And I renamed it. And I have ACF file. See now I need the crypto blinker. <laughs> what I could do is I uh, just put this if I put this God. if I can move it off make it not so visible. It's still the same as if I'm doing it here. Okay. Uh, this is going to be reply and same here. This one I, I remember was not generated. I had to make this one. Okay, oh yeah, that's the problem with that. But that's okay. It's not too bad. Oh, that's right. That's right. This was uh, this was generated. If I recall. Um, there was a. <clears throat> Here, this. Yeah, that's it here. Okay. So this is the command line. Slash I slash O. UUID gen I slash O required idea. Okay, that's right. And then I change this to the name of the interface that I want. And an ACF file. Doesn't have any, um, it doesn't have a, any UUIDs, just the interface name. Now, was that enough? Just to begin. And what did this say? Okay, you have completed. Have this in my history somewhere. Okay. So first we generated that file, <clears throat> and then we were going to define some functions, right? So I wanted to. Take this, and I wanted to add some functions to do the reverse operation. Um, I'm 
it's further down. It's C like definition. We had to take these two includes. I won't go through all of them, I'll just go through this first bit. And uh, what I wanted was, uh, I still wanted to shut down. So that was the same. And then, uh, boy, let's say. Now I wanted a reply. Reply. Proc. And I tried various things, and I looked online, and um, I tried first just putting out, you know, like out, comma, string, and that didn't work. But I, when I tried running the, whatever the command is that generates those C files, it told me that I needed to supply a size uh, something like this, right? And I just guessed, in fact. I, I saw some things here and there. This doesn't work. I can try doing it. The next thing to type is um, NIDL. Oops. I think that's all. Can I get an error? This doesn't work, it seems, when I try to do this in MS Dev. Oh, geez, I mean, all sorts of files. This is different. This doesn't seem to be what happened last time. <laughs> Holy cow. Of course, it went a lot quicker before. He wasn't running it. Through this, great. Is it just going in a loop? No. Okay. Cannot be. Out. Only parameter cannot be an unsized string, see? And from some of the stuff I saw, I get, I just guessed, and it was um, in. C max out and uh, it's size something size out maybe no not size of uh, well I'll show you where it works. I just this size is okay. That was a total guess, but I, I saw something like that, so I just tried. Size is C max. So I don't know what C max is. But this is a function that takes two parameters, um, an in parameter and an out parameter, and the size of the out parameter is specified in the in parameter. And I try that again, and it worked. 
विघ्नार Then, of course, it was a matter of writing um, those two files, the client and server side C files, and then transplanting that back into MS Dev, and it all worked first, first go, and I was able to transmit data back from the server to the client in a, in a buffer provided on the client stack. And obviously the server can't write to the client stack, it's a different process. So the data obviously gets copied, you know, for name pipe. It's a string, so that's pretty easy. And um, uh, an allocation occurs, and the allocation occurs on the client side. You know, it's funny. Uh, User supplied allocation uh, functions. What's this? Oh, that's just my window thing. It's slow, right? Let me close this box. Come on. Message. Oh, it's completed. Try again. Um, syntax error. C max expecting a typo. Let's um, <coughs> put this has to be an uh, int. Could be a size type. I don't remember what I put. Probably int. See, what should I put? I haven't found uh, uh, what it's in here anyway. And yeah, see. Notice how this here is black. I don't know why. I know it's not a C file, but the, these other things um, are recognized. Why is this not recognized? I don't know. S see it completed. Now, what have I got? I got the underscore C and the underscore S, the header file, uh, looks very similar to before. Okay, here, here are the declarations, just like before, and um, the server code. What well, happened here? I converted it. Uh, I converted these to CPP. Invented these two. Here's the reply prop. Okay, I'm just copying. This is a set of fly. I just copied this essentially from the, from the other project. Uh, exactly the same as before. I think. I don't think there's any difference. 
um, of course the, the client is different because it has it wants to make a call here's the call where it provides a size and a pointer and apply prompt okay now this is being called from up here and the character string is 100 bytes big and uh, I'm just doing like before if there's a parameter If there's no parameter, I do the call. And if there is a parameter, then I call the shutdown. Just quit back right the size. Uh, do the call, otherwise shut down. And uh, first go, it worked. So that means that I can do that uh, RPC stuff in two in two directions, right? And so it's all ready to go to make the to build HTTP client an HTTP client interface that uses RPC. Now, what about <laughs> the other thing I've been wasting my time on? The other thing I've been wasting my time on, which is not a complete waste, I don't think is this hex editor first you know as I normally do in new test uh, I thought uh, maybe I could quickly whip up a binary editor because I want to add that to my notepad thing right I want to add the uh, ability to open a file that's not text right uh, and have it just be a, like a standard binary editor. So I just started with a first with a dialog, which is what I have here. This is still a, basically a unit test. And I, I want to be able to do it for like a large file. Let's see now. This thing takes a parameter. Got a big file around. Here's a big file. All right. These are quite big. That's 300. That's in May, right? 340 May. We'll put that in. It's binary. This will open that file. We'll run it. in one big chunk but it won't, it's not going to put all of that in the editor it's just going to put a little bit as much as can fit I had, I, previously I had a little please wait modeless dialogue okay see now this is uh, that file and um, since the file itself is uh, not all in the edit control, uh, I have to do, do this part manually, the scroll bar. So that's one of the things I have to figure out how to do. How to do a scroll bar. I added a new control, copied from MFC as usual. Uh, one of my controls. And it's very much like a spinner, like a spin control. But spin control shows you a number, whereas this thing shows you a little bar moving up and down. This is a page down operation. See, now that's moving. You know, it, I can also drag it around. Uh, now you notice how this is quite quick. The reason, of course, being that the whole, only this much data is ever in the editor. Let it control at once. And all the way to the bottom. And it fits exactly. It took me a while to sort that out. 
uh, but it works. So how, how that works is through a kind of magic. Uh, the scroll bar control. If you can find one in use anywhere in Windows, then then you got me beat because I couldn't find one anywhere. They're all they're all over the place. But if you try, I wanted to find out what the class name was because I have this assertion. See. See, that doesn't light up the scroll bar. That's a console window class. You know, how about my notepad? There's a <coughs> certainly a scroll bar there, right? As you'll see. It's not, it's not. It's just an edit. Okay, okay. Refresh. It's just an edit, and there's no scroll bar, nothing. And so, but you can in the resource editor you can add a scroll bar uh, thing, whatever you call it, control. But I don't see, I don't, I can't find one anywhere. I couldn't find it. I needed to know the name in order to do the. Oh, there's one. Okay, scroll bar. I hadn't found that one. Eventually I found it out just by running my own dialogue and uh, finding out what its name was. And it turns out I already had the name anyway. So this create the, the resource, well that's true, I could have looked in the resource too, <laughs> but the these resource files have it says scroll bar and this is defined somewhere wc scroll bar oh that's my scroll bar scroll bar see <laughs> now I don't know if it's just me Maybe I'm thinking backwards or something, but has this ever happened to you? Okay, it's all messed up. But, see, I was thinking that, uh, you know, a good place to put the scroll bar would be, like, right here. You know, inside the box and then it would and then resize it so that it fits right on top of this one. Now you'll notice that I, I can't I can't touch it anymore. It's a bit it's on top vis visibly it's on top but I can't touch it. This is true for all controls in, in this resource editor. If I want to be able to touch this, it has to be drawn first. You know what I mean? If I change the tab order, like that, okay, now I can move it around. But it's behind. You see what I'm saying? But not only that, that's the, the drawing order as a as it would appear when you run your dialog that that is the drawing order and the z order are reversed so that which is drawn last is um, below that which is drawn first right uh, this um, edit control is drawn first and it's below this uh, thing, sorry, it's above this thing which is drawn last, sorry, below, below, sorry, I got it backwards. The thing that's drawn first 
is um, on top, right? On top, things are drawn first, and the, the things that are below, further into the page, if you if you will, uh, are then drawn afterwards. It's completely mad. It's, it's madness. But anyway, the reason these are all me messed up like this is because I I do the repositioning you know, just based on the size of this block. It doesn't matter where I put these or how big they are. It's it's going to come out the same. If I compile this, it doesn't matter. You'll see the block comes out the same. So I, that thing can't go, cannot go within the same, unless maybe it's just that clipping thing, maybe you can enable clipping. Otherwise, it has to be outside of, uh, of the edit control or else you won't see it, even though it's on top, as far as, you know, the input. Uh, input goes. Uh, yeah, this thing sends special special messages. You um, actually that's not correct. It should be further over a little bit. And further down down doesn't matter. <clears throat> uh, this gives you like a line down message. This gives you a line up message. Uh, this is page down. It's up to you how you want to implement you know, the response to those messages. This m dragging things around um, gives um, gives you a, p a position. The position is having been defined by you by uh, calling set range, just like a spinner, exactly the same thing, you put all that stuff, set scroll range, right, set range, visible lines has to do with the size of the window, possible line, uh, one line is 16 bytes, and, and so on, it's actually quite simple, really. Uh, it, there shouldn't be much to completing this thing, and then I'll add it to my notepad. If I have no file, it just generates a random uh, thing of some length. Random garbage or random length. So just for testing, right? Uh, this should have, so it should probably be one, one, well, doesn't matter. If you subtract this amount off uh, and then take uh, and then um, take 16 and multiply that by 3, I guess that would bring you here. Then the wherever the cursor position column column and row is you can easily determine which byte that corresponds to uh, by dividing by taking that off divide by three uh, and if uh, the remainder is not zero sorry the remainder is not two zero one two yeah the remainder is not two then um, that the column tells you the off offset of the byte starting from here, right? And that tells you which character over here at a specific easy to figure out position it corresponds to. And so you can make an editor, uh, make turn this into an editor by Subclassing the control and uh, you know handling the key the keyboard input. In my case, I want to restrict 
it to numbers and letters up to F, make everything all capitals, and there, there you've got a binary editor, right? There shouldn't be much more to that. It's just a matter of integrating this code into my notepad. So those are two things that I'm working on. Uh, one thing I did was I made an installer for my XML viewer. Curious. Uh, where did I get that? This should now just run my XML viewer. That I installed it. And, uh, uh, It, it should have associated, yeah, associated it with the XML view. Is that of any use? I don't know, but I'll put it in my util zip one. One thing I'd like to know, and I think I know the answer, is that you, after the window comes up, right? I want to give the console back. I think all I got to do is call pre-console, right? This might work. XML U. So Windows Pro it doesn't have a console to begin with. It does it. Uh, if there is a console, then it uses it as, as it's doing here. By uh, attach console. Oops. You can see how big this project is. Oh no, it is a console program. It's a console program. Oh dear. Well, I'll change it to a Windows program. Oh yeah. Oh, that was really same. Anyway, you, you can do the same thing. Just as with this hex edit, it was initially a console program, uh, and I wanted to change it to a Windows program. So this was previously underscore key main, and then I changed that to win main, changes the subsystem and whatnot, and use my special magic function win main to con main. So I bundled that up into one function that takes one of these types of functions as its argument and it calls it with the appropriate command line stuff. You know, arg0 is uh, arg v of 0 is the program and the, and the there's a, you know, arg v1, 2, and so on. Exactly the same as console. So it's an easy transition. What you would do if you wanted to use the console, like if I want to do that spinner while this is loading up a large file, I could do that with something called attach here. Which, uh, it's, there's only one value to put in. Like this, and this returns. Okay. So if that returns true, that then there is a console, and you can get <coughs> the handle to window of that console. You want it? You don't really need it. Yeah. Well, maybe you do. No. When you're done with the console, I think 
just call this and it'll it'll let it go and then just like when you run explorer you get back you don't end up with this scenario with this here is block until I until I finish with this. Right? Okay, well those are just a few things I'm uh, looking at. Hopefully I'll have uh, something interesting for the next video. Okay, I think I covered everything. Uh, well, I didn't really complete this part, but you saw that the first step were done. These things had been created, and the as far as the uh, the P one for the remote procedure, I don't. There's no. I should run it actually. And show you. Uh, but I, I'll just tell you. I'll, I'll run it next video. Here, uh, the reply proc doesn't do anything in terms of allocating. It's handled internally through the RPC mechanisms. The RPC thing, not on the server side as it turns out, does do some allocating on the client side. Uh, I put a breakpoint here and it got hit. So, but it does use this. I didn't try putting these as capital. I could try that too. Maybe there's a difference. Okay, see you.